it's Lauren Bradley here from The Officials, and I'm bringing you another video in the series I'm doing with the lovely folks over at Anderson Hoare. And today I want to talk to you a little bit about being an agile assistant and using this as your number one tool. So I don't know what I would do without my phone. I myself use an iPhone. I do have an Android that I use for testing, um, but in this video I'm going to talk uh, from experience and what I use. So I'm going to talk mostly, I'm going to keep saying iPhone. A lot of these apps go across uh, platforms, so I will link them all below this YouTube video so that you can find all these apps and use them yourself. Uh, but these help me on site, remotely, be able to do my job from anywhere quickly and more productively. So first, I want to talk to you about using the assistant built into your phone. So with an iPhone, you're going to get Siri. With other phones, you might you even, you can even download on an iPhone, but you can get Google Assist. And uh, they all work basically the same way. I use it for very simple things, but I often get stopped if people go, you can do that with an iPhone? And it's some of the most simple features that are on the phone. So. I use Siri when, say I'm running to the kitchen and someone's just stopped me to tell me that they noticed that a lock on a conference room handle isn't working as well, so I have to do a maintenance request. Or somebody says, I have a guest coming at 2 p.m., can you just make sure that they are put into this room and find John because that's actually who they're meeting with today. Those little pieces that maybe aren't extremely urgent, but I need to remember when I get back to my desk. Now usually my first point of call would be to ask them to email me. My email is my triage. I ask that all my requests come through to email. I'm thinking about changing this to Slack, but at the moment I'm sticking with email. Uh, but sometimes you just know those people that are not going to email you. So what I do is I pull out my trusty assistant and I will stop and say, remind me in 15 minutes to put a maintenance request in for the broken lock. Okay, I'll remind you. And Siri will remind me in 15 minutes by putting a little message on my phone that will vibrate on my phone. Now, if it was something maybe more urgent, maybe like the guest that's coming at three o'clock, I will say, set an alarm for 3 p.m. to greet John's guest. John's guest alarm for 3 p.m. So now I have an alarm for 3 p.m. Now if the guest was coming at 3 p.m. I'd probably set the alarm for 2.45 just to make sure I'm at my desk because it's one of those things if someone just tells you on the fly and you go out to lunch you need 15 minutes to get back to your desk to make sure you're greeting that guest. So that's two common ways that I use it. I also use it every morning to check the weather. What's the weather like today? Here's the weather today. And then it will give me the weather today and then I know if I need an umbrella or a coat uh, for the day um, but it can also record notes it can do so much more and uh, especially now with the development of AI things are getting a bit more advanced in the digital assistant world but today we're just going to focus on some of the simple tasks you can do but that is one way that I use the assistant built into my phone to make my life easier. The next one that I'm going to talk to you about is G Suite. So some people like to use Dropbox, some people like to use OneNote, and that's great. Use what's comfortable for you. However, I really, really like G Suite and the whole applications, that, all the applications that come with that. You've got Google Drive, Sheets, Docs, Forms. You've got a lot of uh, sort of diverse applications in there that kind of mimic um, Microsoft Office, but because it's in G Suite and it's, it's a simplified version, it's basically what you need. It's easier to look at from any device. Trying to open a Word document and edit it on your iPhone is quite hard. They've made advances, but it's still not the same. However, I find that the G Suite products really do translate across devices. And so the reason why I really like G Suite is one, and it kind of, it also does the things that Google Drop, or I'm sorry, that Dropbox do and that 
OneDrive can do, except, like I said, it's in a more simplistic format. And so you can share a document. I could be updating a live document for a meeting coming up. Maybe my boss has called me at 8 a.m. I'm still on the train and said, I need to change the agenda before we get in. And I'm going to get there with five minutes until the meeting. Not a problem. I pull up Google Drive, which is basically the file manager for all of my documents, uh, spreadsheets, forms, PDFs, any documents that I want in there they're there for me. So I open up the meeting minutes, I update it, and in fact, because I'm an agile assistant, I've made sure that my principal is now on the same software, so they've got the document open and they're making changes and we can see each other making changes live. And then when I get in, it's all finalized, I send it off to everyone, turn it into a PDF so no one can change it, send it out to everybody, or I can go in and print it uh, moments before the meeting. This has saved me on so many occasions to be able to be leaving at, at 5 o'clock and say, uh, I'm on my way out, I'm going to send this document to you in a couple minutes, to be on my way home or to be out at lunch or to be running an errand and have somebody say, I need those board meeting minutes, and to either tell them where it is very quickly because you can send documents as easy as just sending a link, or I can send it to them myself. Uh, and I find this is possibly the biggest uh, game changer for me as far as technology advancing is just being able to work remotely literally from everywhere and especially my phone. Uh, it's not something I want to use long term. I don't start making documents a lot from my phone. I'll do that from my laptop or my desktop, but if it's tweaks uh, or I need to do something in a pinch, this will do it. The next app I want to talk to you about is called 1Password. Now there's a lot of password applications out there, password vaults, safes, uh, but I really like 1Password. It's called 1Password because after you've completely set it up, really you just need to know 1Password. So I will go into it here and you will see it's asking me for my 1Password because I have fingerprint uh, touch on my phone, touch ID, I'll put my fingerprint on it, and it will bring up all of these categories that I have uh, passwords saved for, but it doesn't just save passwords. It will save bank accounts, passport details, uh, rewards programs, so I belong to Holland & Barrett, which is a health food store, and, uh, and it gives me my ID, and I can actually um, save the photograph of the actual physical ID because sometimes, especially for credit cards, if you call, I don't know if anyone else has been caught in this, but you call to talk to someone about your principal's Amex and they'll ask you for the phone number on the back of the card to make sure you're physically present with the card and having a picture of the card has been an absolute lifesaver. And so I really love 1Password and the great thing is, is that you can set either up a individual subscription, a family subscription, a business subscription, and you can control who sees what vaults they call it. So you get a private vault that only you see. You can create shared vaults that you share with, with others. And I always make sure that my principal knows exactly how to remove um, me from the process so they know it's a, it's a trust environment. I want them to know if uh, our relationship ends for any reason, or if another assistant comes on, maybe I, I'm ill or something, they know exactly how to share those details. It's all encrypted. It's all done through a very strong uh, password that gets it installed onto your program um, or a QR code that you have to scan. But I absolutely love this. If I change anything right now, it will change on my principal's phone instantly. So when they go to check the password, if I'm in London and they're in New York, instantly they're going to have that password. And again, this is, I almost every new client I have, I start with one password and go, are you, where do you save your passwords? Where do we start? Because I, if you're going to be an assistant to someone, you need to know their credit cards, passwords, and I don't want to be saving that information uh, in my notebook. I want it in a safe, secure place. And so usually I start the first day setting up one password for all of my principles. So Canva is a really fun app. It is a, an easy design website, really. So if you go to canva.com, 
It's like Canvas without the S. It is chock full of templates for documents, signage, posts, uh, workbooks, anything you can think of. It is absolutely full of them. And this is just in the free version alone. There is a paid version that you can use that will allow you to resize documents more easily and use some of the premium photos. But even with the free version, it's, it, it is a really great application um, for stock photography and graphics and to make some really great signs and reports for your business. Um, and the well, how I use it on my phone is that there is an app and it allows me, so if I have created something and I want to send a report off that's just a little bit more special, I also really like the presentation function, so the way it copies PowerPoint, and um, I've made some really beautiful power uh, decks from this, slide decks from this. But uh, so right now I'm working on a course book called Getting the Job for the official's um, HQ membership site that is launching very soon. And when I go on here, I can pull it up, I can make changes, I can save it, send it off to anyone. This is all done from templates um, with my own words. This is a very big document, so it's taking a little time to load. But you can see that I have, as I said, it's taking a little bit of time to load. There we go. It, I can send this off to anyone I want. I can make changes. But again, this is all from amazing templates and great stock photography that I can uh, use and uh, make the lives of my principals and the lives of other assistants out there that I'm helping much better with some beautifully designed documentation. The next application I have that I want to tell you about is Tiny Scanner. So Tiny Scanner, basically I don't even use a scanner anymore. It's, it's across the office. Again, I'm an agile assistant. I'm on the move all the time. And if someone has a document, I am able to quickly take a picture. So I've got, I've got a calendar right here. I could take this out, take a picture. It will then try to find the edges. In this case, because of the shadows, I wasn't so great. Save it, done. I can flip it. I can change the edges. And now I can either save it to Google Drive, which I usually do, or I can send it in an email and I can add attachments. I can do whatever I like with it just as a scanner, save it to a color copy, a black a black and white copy, a photocopy, send it off and I can do that again on the train, in the coffee shop, at lunch, on my way home. If I've got just one other thing I need to do but I absolutely have to get on the train to get my kids, then I use Tiny Scanner. So this next tip is going to be very specific to iPhone. So if you have a document, so I'm going to go into my photos, so I'll start here again. I'm going to go into my photos and here I have a document. Now, if you use this, if you click on this little share icon, you can go through here and find print. Now, you can send it to a printer from here, but if I wanted to turn this photograph into a PDF, you go to here and you expand the document in the, when it's in the print screen and you get another one of these little share icons. And when you click that, it's now going to save it as a PDF. So I now have the ability to send it as an email. I can save it to Dropbox. I can save it to the files on my phone. I can save it to Google Drive. Um, I can set, send it through WhatsApp. And that is really handy sometimes, especially if you're looking at a website and someone's not getting seeing the same thing that you are, especially if you're international these days. There's some um, privacy laws in Europe that make it hard for people in the U.S. to see our sites. And so if I'm talking to some one of my principals that's flown to the States and I'm here in London, we sometimes don't see the same thing. So I will change it into a PDF, send it off. If, speaking of PDFs, another quick tip is uh, that I use uh, Adobe DocuSign. So I've got... Adobe DocuSign, I'm going to go to my camera roll. I'm going to find that document. You can also go in this app and say it's in my email and it will tell you how to open it. You'll get that little share icon. You can choose DocuSign on there. You go into here. 
I've pulled up the document, and now I can go in here, tap anywhere to create a field. I can change it however I like, or I can create a signature. And I can sign this document and get it on my way. Now, this is really great for me, but more often I need my principals to sign things. They will either create, I will create their signatures so that I can sign documents on their behalf, or I will show them and install this on their iPhones as well, or their Android phones as well. This is one that is a cross-platform, but is a really great way to be able to sign a document and send it off. Now, in a pinch, you can also use photos. So say I just go into this because it originally is just an image, and I back out so it's just the image. I go to edit the three little dots and I say mark up. Down here there's plus sign. If you click that signature. Now I've already saved some signatures in here and I can say or I can add a new one. I'll put my signature on there. I can manipulate the size, move it around, sign, send, and again, I can now save this to a PDF. If I wanted to say I just took a quick photo of a document, did this, signed it, sent it off by using the um, uh, going to print, then expanding the document, sending it out that way as a PDF, then I've just saved myself so much time of saying, I'll get that when I get to the office, or I'll do it when I get back to my home office, and I get the printer and the scanner, and I load it in, and then I or I, I print it out, I sign it, I scan it, I send it off. So that's it. Those are my tech tips and the applications that I use to be a more agile assistant so that when I'm on the go, I can still be very effective and get the job done. I would love to hear what you thought of these tips. If you could please comment below, I'd love to read them. And I, of course, will be commenting back. I'd love to hear how you are an agile assistant and the applications that you use to help facilitate that. Uh, if you like this video, please make sure you like it, subscribe, and uh, there is actually an article that I've written on these tech tips and a few more over on the officials blog at jointheofficials.com. I will link that in the description of this YouTube video below, so if you want to check that out, please do, and I can't wait to see you next time in the next video. Bye!